Um, Sam is going to talk to you a little bit about the, the beginnings, and then, um, but Tom is the one that really helped his daddy build this park. So what you see now is his effort. <laughs> so, all right, go ahead, Sally. And if you can't hear me, just raise your hand. I know I need to project a little louder. Yeah. And right off the bat, I want to point out this lake was not here <laughs> when we started. That was trees. All of that was trees when we moved here. We moved here when I was nine. I think Tom was 14 or something like that. Tom will tell you that he had nothing to do with this park, with developing it, and that's not true. When he was 15 years old, he was out there in that bay knocking down trees with a bulldozer. So he had a lot to do with it. I would have paid them. <laughs> <laughs> and he was also a lifeguard once we got water, and, and um, I ran the bathhouse. They tore it down after I left. <laughs> Um, I want to thank Donna for putting all this together, and um, uh, it was a lot of effort on her part, and her lovely assistant, Jackie Rowan. Um, also, I want to introduce some very special guests, and I'm going to screw up the names, I know. But Michelle Cunningham, if you haven't met her yet, is the park manager. And Layola, nobody's told me your last name. <laughs> I promise you, it's, uh, it's fine. Um, my name's Leola Smith. Smith. Okay. Smith. I could have remembered that. You got a hat on Smith. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what came before the park. Um, then we'll see the video. And Tom made this video with pictures that were made at the time the park was being developed. But our dad, LaFawn Norton, thought that you deserve to have a park, that you should have a state park. They were being built all over South Carolina, and he thought Dillon County ought to have one. <laughs> and he started working on that, and he started getting people enthusiastic about it, working with him. But the parks were being built all around, and he didn't see any reason why Dillon County shouldn't have one. That was his vision that there should be one here for you. He was a forester. That man loved trees. <laughs> and his job was to protect the trees. He was in fire control for Dillon County. And um, he not only put out the fires with his crew when there was a fire, he did a lot of education. <clears throat> he spoke to the schools. Uh, went around and uh, took all the Smokey the Bear material, passed it out. In fact, one of my earliest memories of just being a toddler was sitting in his office in the agricultural building, coloring Smokey the Bear. <laughs> so he, got, he had a lot of that. He also spoke to the Boy Scouts. He spoke to the Girl Scouts. He spoke to them so often, they made him an official member. <laughs> so my dad was a, an official Girl Scout. He spoke to civic clubs. He also spoke to individual landowners, and you may be one of them that he spoke to, because he tried to help them know what to do to protect their trees what you had to do, the fire lanes, the, the planning that you needed to do to keep your uh, land safe. And all that time, though, we kept thinking about this vision about that Dillon County should have a park. He really thought that you should. He thought that being in nature, and we've all experienced this, you get out in nature and it's kind of rejuvenating. It's kind of inspiring. For a lot of people, it's healing to be out here. But he, he needed to have a place where you could have that experience. He wanted you to be able to bring your friends and your family. And also, where you can just come by yourself. You can pick up a sandwich somewhere, come out here, just relax. You can come out here and go fishing. 
I'm not, but you can. <laughs> um, you can take, you can do a trail walk. My husband Mike, I didn't introduce him. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is my husband Mike Nedman. Mike and I like to walk the dam. It's a nice, easy walk. You're getting to enjoy the water the whole time. Uh, you might try that. I think you would like it. Another thing that I think is great to do out here is a boat ride. Now, when I was younger, I'd paddle all around this boat, the boat all around this lake. Uh, I don't do that anymore. Um, my idea would be to get in a boat with a pillow, a good book, and drift. Just drift. You can enjoy it so much, and it is so relaxing to hear that water just gently hitting your boat. Try it. You'll like it. And the really neat thing about all that to get and to do all those things. You don't have to maintain this place. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they, do they do all the maintenance, so you don't have to do anything. But he really had the vision that you should have this park, that you should have a place to come, relax, enjoy yourself. And he got other people interested too. And they all worked together. The politicians in the county worked with him. They finally got it approved. They won. They wanted a park and they won. And then the state called and asked him to build it. <laughs> so this is what you'll see in the video is what happened as it was being built. And then after the video, Michelle is going to talk to you for just a couple of minutes about what's happening now. So you'll know what's new in the park. Donna, you're on. Okay. <laughs> all kind of little machines here. <laughs> Rufus has to help me here. There we go. Okay. I've got a little speaker, so you have to really listen. I want to thank Tommy for doing this. This is really a historical document. Mm -hmm. I want to say one thing. Is that okay. Daddy was dying when this was recorded. He had prostate cancer and it lingered for a year. So he knew what was going on. He was recording this for posterity. While that's coming up, um, some of you might remember, I don't know, I'm trying to look and see who might remember. They had square dances out here every I Saturday I night. Do you? We'd come, I'd come with Mom and Daddy every Saturday night. We had square dances out here. And my other memory is the Baptist Church from Dillon had camp out here during the summer, tent camping over in that, the camping area. And um, that was always interesting. <laughs> okay. said you knew every word. <laughs> you might have to say every word, Tom. Kind of just go to the settings and make sure the Bluetooth is on. To go to the settings. Yeah. We were out here yesterday afternoon and it worked it, perfectly. It worked yeah. 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 Naturally. It worked earlier today. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, the park got started, out, I guess, about 1938. Mm -hmm. That's the very beginning. That's the year you were born. And uh, Mrs. Brown, who is Phil Brown's mother, went to Texas to look at a couple of state parks in Texas. And she came back and called me and told me what she had seen. And uh, she got me interested in being a state park. That's sometime after CCC was, was uh, in operation here in the county. And uh, I got to inquiring around to see what could be done. And I went to some of the officials and, uh, of the county at that time. And uh, they turned me down flat and said we didn't need no state park. <laughs> we needed to go work and try to make a living. We were still under the depression, and uh, it rocked along, and about the time of the war, come on, we had to abandon the whole idea, but I had found an old place down uh, south of Dillon, uh, it was called the Delta Woodyard, there was nothing in there, it was several thousand acres. And except boot bag liquor stills. <laughs> and uh, there was a possibility of having a lake there. But I didn't know how they, about half a dozen landowners. And I, I didn't know how they were going to react to it. But uh, when we finally got them together one day in the office in Dillon, uh, I told them, now you can have a state park or you can not have one. Today we go make a decision about whether we'll have one or not. And I, I'd already been instructed by the senator that we could pay $40 for the uplands and $20 for the lowlands. And uh, I said, that's what, that's what you, you'll get and no more. And I said, now I'm gonna leave the room for 10 minutes. And at the end of that time, I'll come back and you tell me where you want to stay park or not. And I did go out and when I came back, they had decided that we could, they would sell the land. And uh, then we got busy with uh, get surveyors and all that to survey it out. And that took uh, maybe six months or more. And uh, then come up to the time, at that time I was forest ranger. And I had no idea of going there. Time come up when we go select somebody to come there, and the, the officials in Columbia told me that they were sending somebody, and I couldn't exactly see that sending a strange man in here to do a state park. <laughs> so uh, I said, Well, if you, if you take the job, uh, we'll pay you the same salary you're getting now, which was $2,808 a month a year. <laughs> Uh, I thought about it for a while and uh, then uh, we had decided we'd, uh, I decided to go down there after much thinking. I, I had a good job and was plumb happy with it and I didn't see no use of me quitting and go down there to be, I knew, knew something about a state park and I uh, decided that I might be getting, in, getting myself in this big, big trouble. But anyhow, we decided to go ahead with it. And it took me about a year of them to get all the deeds together and all that while I was working in fire control. And uh, uh, come up to the point of building a house. Go back to Shellenberg. He was a he was a Swede. He was from, from Sweden, but he was an architect and he was a good one too. And. Uh, he encouraged me to write smart about it. And we picked out that old place. And old Mr. Judy Ray, who owned the lake site, most of it, he uh, said he wanted to give his. He didn't want to sell it. He wanted to give it. And all the rest of them were going to sell it. And uh, come up to the time of 
left the contracts for this and that and the other. And the first contract was left for the dwelling house, which Sherwood Mobley got the uh, bid on that. Well, first off, we got $25,000. Uh, Phil Brown uh, got $25,000 airmark for a party in Dillon County. And he the money couldn't be spent nowhere else. Max Ryder and Columbia didn't like that at all. Well, he was uh, in the Senate then? Yeah? Yeah, house member. Yeah. And uh, anyhow, they uh, took the money. And with that, we built a house, dwelling house, or pickup trucks, and bought uh, about a $100 worth of tools. And I remember the day that uh, my wife and son and daughter went down there and uh, we decided where I was going to take the job or not. And I remember that uh, after they left to come home, I sat down on a stoop and prayed for God to guide, guide me in the right direction. And uh, on the way home, I decided to take it. And, uh, then we uh, moved down there, but I reckon it was about October or something like that. The dad told me in Columbia, he said, uh, well, if we ever get the money, we'll give us some money to clear that lake with it. I couldn't see myself sitting there, right on and on, not making some movement towards making a lake for that. And the lake was about 50 acres big. And, so I got Mr. I.P. Stackhouse, who is roof supervisor, to give me some help, chain gang help. And uh, we started clearing that place. That was the awfulest place in the world. <laughs> Bushes, trees, everything. He even found four or five liquor stills in there. <laughs> what year was that you started clearing? That was 1952. We moved there in 1951. And uh, the first year we got about five or ten acres of it clear. And uh, I kept asking me in Columbia to give me a chainsaw. We were sawing with crossfit saws. And one day I saw uh, my immediate supervisor named Ravenel coming down the dam with uh, something heavy in his hand. And when he got there, he didn't. He said, I stole $500 from another park to get you a chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> he said, this saw called $503. <laughs> he said, I don't know a thing about it. The instruction is here. You can read them. <laughs> don't ask me nothing about it because I don't know nothing about it. <laughs> and it was a twin engine mercury chainsaw. And I was so proud of it. And I put it together and got me some gasoline and put it in it. And I cranked it up. And that was a sweet running thing. <laughs> that was a two man saw, right? It was a two man saw. And I asked the chain gang out there, I hollered out there, and I asked me, anybody could be able to run a chainsaw? And just about every one of them hollered, yeah, we can run it. <laughs> but I found out that they didn't know a thing about it. <laughs> they didn't run it. Four it all to pieces. Oh. And I took it to Hemingway where they had a shop there and they repaired it for me, it cost me $80. They had told me in Columbia, said, now you go have to operate it. There's no money to operate it. So it cost me $80 out of my pocket to get it fixed, but I ran it from then on. I didn't trust it to the <laughs> chain gang help. <coughs> the second year we got about, uh, with the chain gang help, we got about 25 acres of it clear, I reckon, and uh, then the state came in and gave me two or three hundred dollars to hire a bulldozer with. And I hired John D. Coleman's bulldozer, and we cleared a good bit of it that year, and there's an old soda spot out in there, and we pushed that down. And uh, we put, got uh, the end of the second year, we got the Old business cleared out pretty good. And we had the dam already built. And we uh, had the spillway built and everything. And we 
cut off the cut off the stream. There's one old stream coming through that. We cut off the stream and started backing up the water. It took 31 days to fill it. And it had, on the 31st day, it started pouring over the street. It's covered. But all the NASA logs that was in there, we had to clear it. Get those logs out of there because they, there was no way in the world to get logs flowed out. And uh, we had to lower the water <coughs> and start pulling those logs out of there by hand and rolling them and everything else. But finally we got it done. And after about two and a half, three years, we had ready to get the water back in. And that time we filled it up pretty quick. And we do it for two weeks. Of the job of making the beach and all that kind of stuff. That took quite a while. And there again, the money was short. And I had to haul a lot of the sand from down on the river in the pickup truck. But uh, we finally got a drag line in there and it cleared a lot of it. I found myself down there with a Running a state park with very little money to run it on. And uh, a lot of people started coming in. The first year we had 25,000 people. And from that it built up to around 100,000. Which when I told some of the others about it, they laughed at me when they were having a million or a million and a half people a year. But the park was young. And I figured it would grow, and it did. And when I left there 21 years later, the attendance was around about 100,000 a year. And we were taking in enough money to operate, which was $20,000 a year. And, but uh, I got pretty old. I was 64 years old then. And I figured it's time for me to quit and get out. And I'm proud I did. And, uh, it started sending other people, but since I left, I, I expect there's been eight or ten different superintendents there. And I don't know how many park rangers, a lot of them. But, uh, running a state park is far different from working for the fire service and fire control. <laughs> uh, but when it's all over, said and done, and they honored me by naming the lake for me. I reckon I'm proud that I did that job. I wanted to run over the major years again. The park, let's see, we moved down there in 50, 51. 51, the house was built in 51. And we started work on the lake in 52, I reckon. I remember uh, that uh, Dr. Hankins came down there one day and and that had been in 1954. And he says, when you go from this lake, I says, this year, that had been 1955. He says, we're swimming dive in 55. <laughs> <laughs> well, what year was it closed down for because of integration? That must have been about 1964 or 5, somewhere in there. That much later? And it uh, stayed closed for nine months. Nobody went in there. But the people that worked there after was one with two people. Me and uh, old uh, Coleman, whatever his name was, Laverne, Laverne Coleman. And finally, uh, the feds gave them $12 million, what's called BOR money. I never did find out what BOR was. <laughs> but that was for permanent developments in all state South Carolina State Park. Actually, I thought it was just buying them to get them a, buying them to, so they'd integrate and, and, and open them back up. I always had that feeling I could have been wrong. But anyhow, at that point, we, uh, the park director came down there and he said, what do you need? He had one of the big yellow pads. I said, well, I need another house in here so the park ranger can live in. I was doing the bulk of the work myself. 
and he put that down on his pad, and he said, where do you want to put it? I'm right across the room there. He said, that don't block the fire. He has to do two. I was about 40 acres over that. So he went over and looked at it, and he said, it looks like good to me. And um, he said, what else do you want? I said, well, I don't want uh, two more showers. Well, we never had space enough for the people to just run out of space and have to haul the tables out of the campground. And then after it all, the day is over, we had to haul them back in there because the campers were coming in, started coming in about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, we needed some more shelter room so that people wouldn't have to pick up their food and put it back in their car or get out of there. When it started raining, something like that. But we never did get those two showers. <laughs> but, uh, we did get another. Well, how did you work that deal with? We started, you know, I worked along with you and John a little bit, and it was, uh, we were cutting timber out of the lake and selling the timber to get money to fix the tractor and buy gasoline. Did the state approve of that, or did you just do it? Oh, they approved of it, but, uh, they told me to hand it, and I got pleased and said, don't tell us nothing about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we sold, I reckon, $10,000 worth of timber out of that place. I tried to give it away, and nobody would have it. Give it away. Too hard to log. Yeah, they give it away if they log it, yeah. yeah. Uh, you remember that time I had the chain gang on there and one of the guys ran away? escape prisoner he told the uh, head of the chain gang and the guy said oh, don't worry about it <laughs> 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 you just go on visit for a while he'll come back <laughs> and he did he says where are you going to go up and down the highway in a striped uniform <laughs> <laughs> but I, I worked out there with the chain gang for a while I was 13 at the time I guess and a colorful bunch of people. Because one of them, his nickname was Black Knight. He's one of the strongest men I've ever seen in my life. Two or three guys would bring a log up to the truck. He would put it on it by himself. Oh, God. I think he eventually ran off too. But <laughs> <laughs> and nobody went after it. <laughs> no, that, that chain gang was a piece of work. Uh, they don't have it anymore, do they? Well, I don't have everything else. Mm -hmm. 
They have county workers, but not. <laughs> I knew wives and mothers used to be able to bring the inmates supper oh, and wow. all this kind of stuff. So we had a, a guy helping us out at Little Rock who had spent quite a bit of time out there. Uh, I was trying to think of some of the other stuff he was talking about. What year did the park, I mean, did the lake actually open for swimming? 55. 55? Yeah. Right. And they had a bathhouse and so forth? Yeah. Right. Had a bathhouse. I ran. Had a station <laughs> which I cleaned many times. I oh, found, yeah, I got the, I got the ladies. <laughs> that was a life lesson, too. The women's side was much worse than the boys' side. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that was. But, uh, that was a lot of fun the first couple of years, though. Got a lot of complaints because all the stuff was burned, the trees and all that. Well, that created soot in the water. <laughs> so people would go in their white, nice white bathing suit, and come out with a brown. Uh, <laughs> yep. But, uh, Remember that. Yeah. It was okay. Uh, the swimming. I don't think the swimming ever was that good out there because of that. Although, as I recall, there were five different drainage features coming into the lake. Still fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's probably a better not to have the bathhouse and the swimming <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. There were, I think, four of us, three or four of us were lifeguards and sat around the bathhouse. Yeah, there were always four guards because you always had two on and two off resting. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, am I right to think that you had to pass a test to swim past the floating line out to the island with the diving board on? Yeah. Yes, you did. You thought you were cool if you could do that. Oh, no. That was funny. I liked going for two or three years. I never saw a little boy fail to make it to the island. Mm -hmm. Little girls, they get out there 10 or 15 feet. Help, help, help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> little boys are... Well, you were kind of good looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to talk to the first part. Then we used to take a 300-pound mower, called a gravely tractor. We'd take it out to mow the island by precariously balancing it on a boat. <laughs> we never dropped it. I don't know how. <laughs> wow. And you thought your job was hard. <laughs> 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 now, did you carry that on your airboat? Yeah, somebody. Yeah, there was a <laughs> <laughs> Tell them a little bit about your airboat. <laughs> well, this, we were amazed. This neighborhood guy and I, he, his uncle gave him an engine out of a Cub airplane. Free engine, 60 horsepower, I think. So that translated, well, why don't we build an airboat? <laughs> well, why not? Here's a propeller inside the boat. We couldn't afford to turn it around backwards, so Daddy let us try it out here on the park, which was probably illegal had we asked <laughs> Columbia. We did not. The motor was not in the water originally. And we, we turned it over the first time by making it skip sideways across the water. And we thought, well, that's cool. <laughs> Until it went up and did a slow roll and came down, upside down. And I understand my mother couldn't talk for a couple of days after that, <laughs> screaming, thinking we were all dead. <laughs> they didn't work out. The last I heard, that boat was at the bottom of a fish pond over here somewhere. That was about it. Daddy was just saying at the end there that uh, he appreciated the lake being named after him. And I, I made the comment that not many people at the end of their career, had that much to show. Oh, yeah. And I said, you've got a lake named after you. <laughs> she said, yeah, I guess that's pretty good. I said, most of mine's in classified files. <laughs> 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 we won't ever know yours. <laughs> yeah. So Rick and I walk usually on Sundays out here with our dogs, and we notice a lot of areas that are, are dug in. Um, it doesn't seem like the natural landscape to have such crater areas. Was it used for a, a trash dump at one time or was it was it natural? Probably. I don't know. Do you know Michelle? Um, so it depends on where you're at, but a lot of it they use dirt to redo the dam. Okay. Kind of this, okay. A bar pit. A bar pit. Yeah. Okay. And Michelle may be ready to talk. Yeah. Yeah, sure. 
Well, Michelle's going to tell them what's new. Yeah. Okay. What year did they stop swimming all together? I know it's not allowed now. What year was that? I'd be guessing. 1987. I was yeah. off in the Navy or somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> now, I spent uh, four years in the Navy and 30 years in CIA, so I was gone for quite a while. <laughs> yes, you were. <laughs> Well, as Sally introduced me earlier, I'm Michelle, I'm the park manager out here, and this is Leola, my ranger. And it's interesting to hear LaFawn talk about things that are very much still the same. There's still just two of us <laughs> running the park. Um, we do have some summer help that we hire, and you'll probably see a few of them out there. If you see us around, feel free to stop us. Um, so a few things that that are different but also the same is the lake is back. <laughs> Hurricane Matthew took it out and uh, I think it's been about two, two and a half years now that they've gotten the dam fixed. The road is now paved again so you don't lose your car bumper or yeah. a small child when you're trying to come in here. So that has brought a lot of folks in. Uh, I laughed at the amount when he was talking about the amount of visitors and how when we talk about that to Myrtle Beach or Huntington Beach, they laugh. They do. They, do. they, they, they make their fun of us. They three to five million visitors, and we have our 300,000-ish folks <laughs> that come, which is still a, for still Dillon County. Pretty great. When we take a look at the map of all the South Carolina state parks, people always ask me, where is Little PD? And I say, well, you look at all the parks over here, and look at all the parks over here, and we're in this big gap in the middle. <laughs> so we have a continued great relationship with the county that he started. Um, one of the things that we've recently gotten done that there's no way that I could have done, and the state, we, we still do some of those. We just don't ask. <laughs> don't ask, don't tell kind of things. Um, but the county fixed the river access road. So I wouldn't go down there today because it is probably muddy. However, if you haven't been down there in a while, prepare for the yellow flies. However, it's nice and smooth now. You can actually get back to our oh, river nice. access. So a lot of our local fishermen that go down there, they have been very appreciative. Um, and we couldn't have done that without the county's help. The, the playground, we just got some new mulch put down in there. So I don't know if you folks come down with your kids in the last few weeks. Actually, it was just last week that we got a bunch of new mulch in there. Um, in the air conditioning, one of the most asked for things was septic. So we had a dump station, but now we have 16 or 17 septic sites along with the power and water. Um, our camping on the weekends, you can't just come in here anymore mm -hmm. on the weekend and say, hey, I want to camp. Unless you want to take camp in just a water only site, but we tend to stay booked up all the way through Christmas. But now we have heat and air conditioning in both bathhouses. Even the old bathhouse that was probably original that's barely sanding, we're <laughs> limping it along. It is, it's now heated and air conditioned. Um, we're doing a lot of trail maintenance. I'm sure over the years you folks have seen a lot of different trails pop up and then kind of overgrow and we are rediscovering those. <sighs> I am from southern Illinois on the foothills of the Ozark Mountains and the Shawnee National Forest and I love hiking and with 835 acres there's plenty of trail space here so we are working diligently to open those up. Um, so something that we a lot of folks ask about is are we ever going to get swimming back? One of my goals because there is no public swimming within I think an hour of here so we've gotten approval from DHEC and we are working on this. So next summer, we are hoping to have that open again. My goal, which I, if you know things about state government, sometimes it takes a little bit longer. I was hoping to do it this year, but we still have a little bit of work to do dredging the lake and getting some sand in there and whatnot. But. My goal is by Memorial Day next year, we'll have that open again. Um, and we've continued with school groups. We had one out last Thursday. We have another one coming out this Thursday, doing some programming, um, working with local law enforcement. Dillon County, Marion County both come out and they train their dogs and um, spend a lot of time here in the park. So we're just glad to be here and be a part of the county and enjoy getting to live where you guys grew up. 
so glad that your dad took on the mission of making this because it's a del delight for me to be able to live and work here. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Oh, maybe I have a question now. What was it? Do you oh fishing and, and do you have kayaks still? Yes, yeah, so we have paddle boats. We don't have any paddle boats. When the lake <coughs> went out. Another park snagged our paddle boat, <laughs> and I've yet to find out who that was. So we, but they're on my list of things to get. But we have canoes, kayaks, and flat bottom boats as well. Yeah. I mean, are they? The uh, you get new tents. Yeah. So that is yes. We have some platform tents. It is a different company. They're essentially just using our land. It's called Tenter. Um, they put in the tents. They're going to be dealing with it. You can still make reservations through us. Um, they have yet to open. They're supposed to open for reservations, I think, in the next few weeks. Um, it's a trial thing. There are eight different parks that are trying it. We were one that was selected. and. We shall see how it goes. What's inside of them? Just bunks, or um, so they all have queen size beds, and then um, they call them coffee tables, but they're essentially wooden egg crates okay. in there. So, <laughs> but they don't have electric, and they don't have water ran to them. So it's for folks that want to go tent camping, but don't have tents and don't really want to deal with tenting. They can just show up and primitive camping across the from the gate. Is, yes, uh, I saw a sign. Indicating primitive camping. Yes. So How many sites? Is, is that the floor tent area? Or? So it is just a giant open space. There's oh. got two um, two big fire pits down there and a shelter. A lot of our scouting groups go down there. Um, I have been told there used to be a hand pump well, which is not there anymore. Um, I'm working a little bit with the county and with the state to try to get the funding to get water ran down to that area because that's the biggest thing that we run into with our scouting groups is they have to have water. And right now they have to come down here to get water to take back over there. So. Are you talking about the, the group site on the other side of the road? Correct. He's, I think he's referring to the... Well, well, I also noticed that um, Longleaf Trail, there's some oh, yes. tent sites out there. I thought yeah. that's what you were talking about. Okay, so the old scout camp by what we in the Park Service refer to as the manager's pond, um, that we have started opening that up and we are going to put some primitive sites back in there, kind of reopen that area. I was just chatting with Tom and Sally to find out how deep that lake is because it's our the top question that we get and I say lake but it's really just a small pond um, so yes those are pro those we plan to open on July 1st and there will be three sites back there that you can reserve and and spend some time at by the pond does your little cabin stay pretty booked up yeah the cabin typically on the weekends is about a three month wait that it's got heating and air conditioning a little mini fridge a Keurig coffee maker in there full-size bed Twin size bunk beds, yeah. uh, nice hammock and a grill, fire pit, and you get lakeside viewing. So it, yeah. Sometimes you can get it during the week. We get a little bit of availability, but it kind of depends on what season it is. What is your rent for? Um, it rents anywhere from sixty to eighty-five a night. Depends on if it's during the week, holiday, weekend. Be sure of your fit. <laughs> <laughs> and you have one. Yes, currently we have one. Did we understand there are going to be two more? At, at some point, Mr. Jackie Hayes, yes. Coach Hayes, he is, he is going to get us a couple more cabins. But again, earmarking things, it kind of just depends on how it how it works with the state. But. I think we do owe him a, a yeah, Coach Hayes, thanks for yeah. getting the road yes. paid. Coach Hayes has done a lot, um, and we're lucky to, to have him. And before I forget, I, I've mentioned it, I, I have been told about the square dances many a time. So if any of you know anybody that does square dancing or that does calling, please contact us here at the park because I would love to just have a, an evening, a Saturday, like special program to have folks come out and, and do some square dancing. Any other questions? You know, you might want to mention that they mentioned it in passing, but this whole area was known as Devil's Woodyard. I had not heard that story. So if you didn't hear, Tom, this whole area was known as Devil's Woodyard. 
Um, there was a, was a hideout for an outlaw in North Carolina called Henry Barry Lowry. Oh, he fought yeah. for the Confederacy and turned criminal after the war. Did he just the border? Kind of seen as a Robin Hood type thing. Uh -huh. But what he was his hide out down here when the Bear. North Carolina people got in there. Henry, Henry Barry Larry. 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 It's, Larry. All, it's in the internet, all kind of oh. stuff about him. And whether he was a good guy or a bad guy depends upon who's telling the story. <laughs> <laughs> but it was Dead Man's Woodyard? Devil's, Devil's Woodyard. Devil's Woodyard. Devil's Woodyard. And there were, as Daddy said, there were liquor stills all over the place. <laughs> Nothing was here but woods and swamp. So the, the two Norton uh, buildings, are they gone now? The, the houses you built? No, they're still there. Yeah, they're 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 they Wow. I should have thought that the entire show. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. okay, that house is very neat, I tell you. And every time, um, every so often I find out something different about that house. <laughs> but I, I love it. It's, it's big, spatial, but um, it definitely has a lot of history to it. Definitely. Well, where are you from originally? Me? South Georgia. <laughs> South Georgia? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, at the very bottom. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Well, now, Tom, I think I met you in Food Lion a few weeks ago. Uh, he said he did. Yeah, I was like, I knew you met a lot of people at the dollar store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, GG. I recognize the uniform. Yeah. Well, we really appreciate you folks coming out. And, uh, I, and we'll be around, so if you guys want to pick our brains afterwards, I'm sure that you have questions for these folks as well. But. And I got something for Sally and Tommy. And Jackie and I came out here one time with the, um, during COVID and had to go to the picture of Lake Norton that was really nice. So I got oh, that to go. Uh -huh. uh, I had Don, to go to the Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It turned out really nice. Oh, that is that gorgeous. Is Thank you so much. much. That's me. That'll go on the wall, Mike. Yeah. What, <laughs> Norm? I, I feel very honored and privileged. I was born the same year he started this, 51. I was fighting with a wonderful uncle, and I had the honor and privilege of growing up as did some of these people. This was our running ground, our playground out here, and it was an absolute treat to see this evolve as, as little people, as kids. It's an amazing thing, and it's always fun in my life. I tell people when you see the sign down there, it's going to be that neat. It's a lot of fun. I want to say one thing about that, and then I'll be quiet. When they approached Daddy about naming the lake, they wanted to name it Lake LaFon. And he said that he was greatly honored, but if they didn't mind, He'd like to name it Lake Norton for the whole family. Oh. Yeah, we're out of here. <laughs> oh.